Welcome to the latest episode of AT Kearney Procurement and Analytics Solutions, The Wave of the Future. The Wave of the Future will keep you in the know about the forces that are shaping the world of business, collaboration, globalization, and sustainability. We'll talk about how these forces are changing the marketplace and the innovative solutions that AT Kearney is bringing to our clients. We'll bring you real life stories of how we are working with our clients and practical solutions to meeting the challenges of an increasingly virtual, decentralized, and resource-constrained world. Sharing knowledge is powerful. From Chicago, Illinois, I'm Stacy Rhodes, and I'm here today with my guest, Hugo Evans. Today, we are going to talk about big data. Hugo Evans has been with AT Kearney Procurement and Analytics Solutions since 2000. He has supported the development and deployment of numerous supply chain management tools for use as part of the AT Kearney consulting engagements and direct to clients. He is currently working on the exploration and application of collaboration tools throughout the enterprise, focusing on such topics as big data, enterprise social networking, and the millennial generation. This is our first podcast on big data. The goal here is to give a brief overview of what big data is and how likely it is to impact organizations. With that being said, Hugo, thank you for joining me today. And I'd like to start off by sharing with our listeners, what is big data? Well, let me start with a disclaimer. There's no unified definition of what big data means, and there's certainly no industry standard, and everybody seems to define it a little bit differently. Also creating confusion is big data can refer to both large data sets of actual data, but it can also refer to new techniques and technologies for handling large sets of data. Also, the technology surrounding big data is changing so fast that what we discuss today may not be relevant or accurate six months from now. With that said, can you give your perspective of big data? At the most basic level, big data refers to working with data sets that are bigger than traditional database technologies and processes can handle. The ideal threshold for most relational databases is around one terabyte. Most database vendors will tell you that their databases can handle data sets much larger than that, but they will also give you the caveat that the database must be maintained, optimized, and performance tuned, meaning they require a lot of maintenance. Also, the data residing in these databases needs to be highly structured and cleansed. Businesses spend significant effort to extract, transform, and load, or ETL, the data between data warehouses, data marts, and the relational databases. All of this effort comes at great cost and limits the breadth of data available for analysis. This is where big data comes in. That's interesting. So what I'm hearing is that big data gives companies a way to handle their massive data sets in ways that current systems don't allow. Is that correct? Yes, and going farther, big data broadly defined is the combination of velocity, volume, and variety. So let me define each of those. So with velocity, these new database technologies, which I'll describe in a moment, give the ability to process large amounts of data, terabytes and terabytes and even petabytes of data in real time or near real time. These same database technologies also replace the slow ETL process with a new process called Extract, Load, Transform, or ELT, where the data is simply extracted, loaded, and then transformed in the database eliminating the need to move the data in and out of the database or the data warehouse. Now, with regard to volume, these new technologies give increased speed, which eliminates data size as a constraint. Now, data in the terabyte, petabyte, even zettabyte range can be efficiently processed. These changes are due to advances in computing technology over the last decade, where processing and storage capabilities have grown exponentially with advances in processing and storage capabilities. Now it's possible to efficiently and cost-effectively build a massive computing system and harness the power of this da- these large data sets. Now with regard to variety, we've eliminated the size and speed limitations that allows for the scope of data to be enhanced. There are almost no data sets that are off limits now whether they're structured, unstructured, or semi-structured, they can be processed in a fast and efficient way. This allows companies to bring their entire corpus of data in to be processed and then analyzed. 
So ultimately, the velocity, volume, and variety of big data allow businesses to ask more relevant and timely questions of the data. Previously, business intelligence was limited by the data size, and analysts would have to do aggregation, data sampling, and extrapolate answers from these limited data sets. Now that data can be processed and mined in real time or near real time, a new term emerges, stream computing. Stream computing is the real-time processing of data as it comes in to produce output. This real-time processing allows for faster and better insights into areas such as customer churn, cross-selling opportunities, fraud detection, health diagnoses, and even energy demand. Our second Big Data podcast will delve into examples and practical applications. So for now, let's talk about with Big Data, analytics now happens where the data lives in the database themselves. Hugo, would you share some information on technologies? Sure, let's take a quick tour of the big data architecture. The best way to envision big data systems is as running alongside existing databases and data warehouse platforms. Big data systems can use data from a data warehouse or a relational database and send it back uh, and forth for long-term storage once it's been processed. Big data technologies can be broken down into two categories those that deal with structured data, and those that deal with unstructured data. To handle structured big data, there are a series of customized technologies that have emerged. These include Massive Parallel Processing, or MPP for short, columnar databases, NoSQL databases, and a few others. MPP in particular uses a distributed processing architecture consisting of a series of nodes controlled by a master. When engaged, the master distributes the query across the nodes for maximum processing efficiency. Similarly, these systems can do ultra-fast data imports or exports through the same underlying mechanism. Almost all the vendors in this space sell their software and hardware combined with a single appliance. This ensures consistency in the hardware, which is crucial to getting the optimal performance, and eases the maintenance. Some of the more popular vendors in this space are Greenplum, Vertica, Aster Data, Netiza, and Splunk. Interestingly, and as might be expected, there are a lot of acquisitions in this space. EMC bought Greenplum, IBM bought Netiza, and HP bought Vertica. It's worth noting that these are all hardware companies that stand to sell more hardware in support of this big data explosion. It's also worth noting that Microsoft has yet to make a strong play in this space, given their dominance in the SQL Server relational database market. But their recent acquisition of a company called Data Allegro should help them advance their SQL Server offering and bring it into the MPP space. With the information explosion, there is a tremendous amount of unstructured data being created. Everything from text messages to tweets, social media and mobile technology are generating large amounts of data. To effectively use this data, say for real-time sentiment analysis, it needs to be processed into an information architecture. Again, another job for big data techniques. The most common way to handle unstructured data is through a technology called Hadoop. Hadoop is not a product, but rather an open source framework that supports distributed applications. The framework consists of a number of components, including a data flow language, similar to SQL, known as PIG, data warehouse, known as Hive, and MapReduce. MapReduce is the engine that drives Hadoop. It distributes data across a large set of clustered nodes, much like Google's core infrastructure. MapReduce is typically controlled by the Java programming language, which requires a different skill set than most data analysts possess. Because Hadoop is open source software, it is cheap to deploy on commodity hardware, much like Apache and Linux were a decade ago. However, Hadoop is not enterprise plug and play ready at the moment and requires strong technology resources to support it. Commercial vendors are now taking the lead to create enterprise versions of Hadoop solutions, which streamlines the integration into the corporate environment. Much like the MPP vendors, we are now starting to see Hadoop-based appliances. Vendors such as Cloudera, Greenplum, IBM, MapR, and a number of other smaller vendors are working to standardize this market. So Hugo, does this mean big data will replace existing analytics technologies? No, big data is not a standalone technology. It is part of the broader analytics technology ecosystem. To make effective use of big data, companies must combine its use with relational databases, data warehouses, 
data mining tools, and advanced analytics software. Tools such as Alpine Data Lab, SAS, SPSS, will run algorithms on these big data sets to discover and answer questions posed of this big data. Hugo, you've mentioned twice at this point that the technology surrounding big data is changing so fast that what we discussed today will become out of date quickly. How would you advise our listeners impacted with managing big data to keep up with the trends of handling big data? I would make two recommendations. First, big data has to be part of an advanced analytics strategy. As companies think about techniques such as optimization, simulation, visualization, and predictive analytics, big data is or will be a key enabler of these efforts. So having a strategic plan to encompass all of these together is imperative. Second, start to research the big data space and keep tabs on the latest happenings. For those that are interested, I do this on my blog, which everyone is welcome to visit at techpasscode.atcarneypas.com. That's tech pascode.atcarneypas.com or on Twitter at techpasscode, tech, P-A-S-C-O-D-E. Well, hopefully from this podcast, our listeners have a better understanding of the breadth of the ever-growing and changing big data market. To fully embrace these changes, companies are going to need bona fide strategies for dealing with big data and advanced analytic platforms, which will be the topic of our future podcast. Well, that brings us to the end of this podcast on big data. I'm Stacy Rhodes in Chicago, Illinois, and I'd like to thank my guest, Hugo Evans, for joining me today, and Tom Klein, our production engineer based in San Francisco. Thank you for listening to this edition of The Wave of the Future. Join us again soon for the next podcast, and if you have any comments regarding this podcast, please email us at podcast.atkearney.com. If you like what you heard, we hope you'll tell your friends. This has been an A.T. Kearney Procurement and Analytics Solutions podcast production. Join us again next time for the wave of the future. And remember, sharing knowledge is powerful.